Welcome at the cathedral. The gates. Let us stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. So with great joy this afternoon, we are gathered here to celebrate two important occasions. Firstly, to anticipate the feast of Christ the King, and at the same time, to celebrate Asian Youth Day. And so this afternoon with us, we have the Archbishop of Lipa, Philippines. He is the FABC Chairman of uh, Family Life and uh, Laity who is here to represent Asia. And we have a number of uh, Filipinos as well who came with him. And of course, his Vice-Chancellor, Father Jason, 
And of course, we also have our own uh, youth chaplain, uh, Father Jude, to celebrate this Mass. And so, we great joy and we welcome all of you who are here, present at the Cathedral of Good Shepherd in Singapore, and those of you who are overseas as you participate this Holy Eucharist virtually. And so, we pray that with this common spirit among all young people, we truly will give glory to Christ our King. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, and in what I failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most previous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O 
Almighty ever living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe. Grant, we pray, that the whole creation set free from slavery may render your majesty's service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. The first reading, a reading from the second book of Samuel. All the tribes of Israel then came to David at Hebron. Look, they said, we are your own flesh and blood. In days past, when Saul was our king, it was you who led Israel in all their exploits. And the Lord said to you, You are the men who shall be shepherd of my people, Israel. You shall be the leader of Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king at Hebron. And King David made a pact with them at Hebron in the presence of the Lord. And they anointed David, King of Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. together. Let's go. 
Second reading, a reading from the letter to the Colossians. We give thanks to the Father who has made it possible for you to join the saints and with them to inherit the light. Because that is what he has done. He has taken us out of the power of darkness and created a place for us in the kingdom of the Son that he loves. And in him, we gain our freedom, the forgiveness of our sins. He is the image of the unseen God and the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, everything visible and everything invisible. Thrones, dominations, sovereignties, powers. All things were created through him and for him. Before anything was created, he existed and he holds all things in unity. Now, the church is his body. He is its head. As he is the beginning, he was first to be born from the dead, so that he should be first in every way, because God wanted all perfection to be found in him, and all things to be reconciled through him and for him. Everything in heaven and everything on earth when he made peace by his death on the cross. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand for the gospel acclamation. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The people stayed there before the cross, watching Jesus. As for the leaders, they jeered at him. He saved others, they said. Let him save himself if he is the Christ of God, the Chosen One. The soldiers mocked him too. And when they approached to offer vinegar, they said, If you are the King of the Jews, save yourself. Above him, there was an inscription, This is the King of the Jews. One of the criminals hanging there abused him. 
Are you not the Christ? He said. Save yourself and us as well. But the other spoke up and rebuked him. Have you no fear of God at all? He said. You got the same sentence as he did. But in our case, we deserved it. We are paying for what we did. But this man has done nothing wrong. Jesus, he said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Indeed, I promise you, he replied, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please remain standing. Please be seated. My dear young people, brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate the solemnity of Christ the King. If you still remember, at the very beginning of Advent, the angel told Mary, that she would conceive a son. He would be the son of the Most High and he will possess the throne of David. This is why the feast of Christ the King culminates the liturgical year because what was promised at Advent is fulfilled in principle on the last Sunday of this liturgical year, anticipating the reign of Christ in all of humanity. At the same time, as I've said at the very outset of the Mass, we are preparing for the World Youth Day next year at Lisbon. The theme that has been given is this, Mary arose and went with haste. And so this afternoon reflection, we want to bring these two themes together, Christ's kingship and how Mary could lead us to truly proclaim Christ's kingship in the world today. Mary, of course, we know. She is the first missionary, the harbinger of the good news, the first to proclaim and to announce the birth of the newborn king. She travelled 145 kilometres through rugged terrain to the house of Elizabeth to bear this good news to them. And therefore, when we celebrate this Asian Youth Day, we have to ask ourselves, how can we too share in Mary's joy, passion, enthusiasm in proclaiming to all of humanity that Christ is our King. I think it is very important to bear this in mind. The kingship of Christ is not a matter of space, of territory. The only space that Jesus, the King of Kings, wants to occupy is our heart and our minds. That is how Jesus rules the world today. In the beautiful hymn we sing to Jesus Christ, our sovereign King, or here Redeemer, King Divine, to rule our minds and to rule our hearts. And therefore, to proclaim Jesus' kingship, it presupposes that all of us 
are submitting to Christ's kingship over us. That we have surrendered our life, like Mary, to God. We all know very well that St. Augustine told us that Mary conceived Jesus in her heart before she conceived Jesus in the flesh. Mary's whole life was submission to the will of God, discerning His will and following His will. That is why Mary lives an immaculate life, a life totally devoted to serving God and serving her fellow men. And so for us young people too, you are the leaders, not of tomorrow, but you are already leaders of today. You have been blessed with resources, with talents, with gifts. The most important thing you need, therefore, to ask yourself that fundamental question is how are you going to extend the rule of Christ through the vocation that you choose in life? What kind of life do you want to live? How do you want to express your vocation? How do you want to use your talents for the glory of God, for the service of humanity? That's a very important question because it is when you submit yourself to the will of God and when you are discerning enough as to what the Lord is calling you, as the Lord called Mary, only then, when you say His will be done, you could truly say with the tribes of Israel, when they came to David, you be our king. So to say that Jesus is our king simply means to say we will surrender our lives to Him. That is the second aspect of proclaiming Christ's kingship. It is the question of how do we proclaim Christ's kingship? You know, Pope Francis, the very important encyclical that he wrote, The Joy of the Gospel. Today, people are attracted by joy, by love, authentic love, by meaning, by purpose. If we want to proclaim Christ, we need to be filled with joy before we can give joy to others. So it's very critical that young people, you must first search for Jesus. You must have the joy that Mary had in conceiving Christ in her womb and in her heart. Without the joy of encountering Jesus, without the joy of resting our life and surrendering our lives to Jesus, we cannot proclaim the gospel. And the greatest thing we can give to anyone, really, and I keep on repeating this same message, it doesn't mean that just because you are intelligent, you are doing very well in the world, just because you are successful materially, you are living a good life, you are happy. No? Happiness is not dependent on all this. Happiness is dependent on whether you are giving your life meaningfully, living it purposefully for God and for your brothers and sisters. That is why the most important gift we can give to anyone is the gift of Jesus. I want to say this, you know, in Asia, most of the countries, perhaps except Philippines, and maybe one more country, I think, I forgot which country, have majority in Catholics' numbers. But in the whole of Asia, Catholic faith is a minority religion. And that is the reason why the Federation of Asian Bishops' Conference in the approach to evangelization, proposes the three, the triple dialogue with culture, with poverty, 
and with religions. Certainly, that is the Asian way because we are a minority of proclaiming the gospel. Because we are being sensitive to the other religions surrounding us. But I also want to say, and we must be careful, that when there is this occasion, and even in Singapore, today there is this question of secularism. We are so respectful of others that we are diffident, we are too shy even to announce explicitly the name of Jesus. And that should not be the case. When there is an opportunity, we must have the courage, as Mary did, bring Jesus to John the Baptist, to Elizabeth, and they were filled with joy. Why should we deprive the joy of giving Jesus to someone that Jesus can make a difference in the lives of others? You know, I remember this beautiful story of a missionary. It's a Catholic missionary. must be a Catholic priest, of course. He went to one remote village in Africa and he brought with him all the resources. This village was very poor. He built schools. He built medical clinics. He built churches. He got all the technology to help them to improve at, in their farming methods. And he worked very hard. And the people were growing and the village was progressing. After 10 years of giving himself to the community, he fell sick. And so he had to return back home to Europe to recover, to recuperate. A five years later, when he came back, to his surprise, truly, the economy, the village, they were flourishing. But all the Catholic churches that he built became Protestant churches. And he was surprised. He said, what happened? And then the villagers, in a very apologetic manner, came to him and said, Father, we are very grateful to you. You have elevated our poverty. You have brought all this uh, medicine and uh, all the education and so on. We are very grateful. But when you left, there was no priest around. And then this pastor came. Protestant pastor, he came and he preached about Jesus. He gave us Jesus, so now we are Protestant. Because he is the one who helped us to know Jesus. So we can be doing a lot of good works, a lot of humanitarian works. We become another NGO. But have we given Jesus? Jesus is the answer to all our struggles, the readers of life. And finally, the last point is this. If we want to establish Christ's kingship, then today the gospel is very telling. Are we ready to stand up for Jesus? Are we ready to be loyal to our king, even to the extent of being ridiculed? Jesus was put on the cross. And we are told, even the criminal said the same thing to him, just as the religious leaders, they were jeering at him, soldiers were mocking at him, and they said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. In other words, prove yourself. Prove. Come down from the cross. You deserve to be hung on the cross because you are a liar. My dear brothers and sisters, today people are looking for weaknesses. It is not enough just to do good things, witnesses of the gospel, whether we are ready to stand by the gospel that we proclaim. Otherwise, we become counterfeits. And young people, I'm sure, many of the young people today have left the church. Do you know why? Because when they are at home, they saw their parents or those, they can be church going, but there is a dichotomy between faith and life. Young people do not believe beautiful doctrines and all these words without reality. We need young people today, therefore, to be able to stand up for what we believe in, for the truth. Because we are living in a culture 
that promotes death, a culture that promotes individualism. You only live wise, the, the YOLO, huh? you only live once, a formal fear of missing out. That's all. It's a culture of individualism. Today is me mentality. I like it. My preference. There is no objective truth. There is no right. There is no wrong. I like it. Therefore, I can do it. My dear brothers and sisters, in the face of this materialism, individualism, and so on, where do you stand? Do you stand by the gospel? Do you stand by Jesus? Are you ready to witness? Because if you do, then I can guarantee you, you will also be ridiculed. That is why today, even in Singapore, no, many Catholics are afraid to let the world know that they are Catholics. Because if they, they know you are Catholics, they will make fun of you. That is why so many cases, huh, we never know a person is a Catholic until when you attend the funeral wake. After 30 years, he's been working in the same office with you. You don't even know he's a Catholic. He's a secret agent, anonymous Catholic, secret agent of Jesus. This secret agent only found out when, he, when you visit the, his funeral wake. Then he says, oh my goodness, my colleague has been a Catholic for 30 years. We need to proclaim Jesus. And today, my dear brothers and sisters, when it's the feast of Christ the King, let us be sure of this. We do not witness Jesus alone. We need the support of one another. We need to be in a family. And young people, we need to give each other support. You need to build a strong network. My final advice to you young people, if you want to grow in faith, you need to have a faith community. Without a faith community, if your friends are all secular friends, then of course you will think like them. But if you have a faith community, you will become truly committed to the Lord. This morning, I celebrated sacrament confirmation in another parish. I went back to the home parish where I was baptized, where I was confirmed, and I told them, the reason why I'm a cardinal today was because of the parish. There I was baptized, there I was nurtured, there I joined the altar service, there I joined the a rosary prayer club, there I joined the catechists and so on. It's the people. Without a faith community, I would have lost my faith. That is why young people, if you want to retain your faith, you want to grow in faith, then you must belong to a faith community. It's a community that strengthens you. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, when you have trials, when you have difficulties, then you will remember, the Lord said, be brave, I have overcome the world and I'll be with you until the end of time. Amen. Let us stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God. The Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. First man and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And, and his kingdom, kingdom will have no end. end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come.
the prayers of the faithful. Let us now act as a repentant thief did and call upon the power and the love of the Lord in our needs. The response is, Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. For Pope Francis and all the ministers of the church, that their, that their leadership, preaching and example may encourage the faithful to stand firm as witnesses of Christ the King. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. Hear us. For leaders of all nations, especially those in Asia, that they may actively work for peace, justice, and promotion of the common good for all humanity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. For the church in Asia, especially our young people, that we may grow in our love for Christ and His church and move in haste to respond to God's call and proclaim Christ as King in our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. For those suffering any form of persecution or struggle, that they may be given strength to persevere as well as receive renewed hope of eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. For our personal intention. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. Father, we thank you for hearing our prayers and we ask that through your love, you respond and answer our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
Please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you. We humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, really right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. With the oil of gladness, as eaten a priest and king of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross, as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption, and making all created things subject to his rule. He might present the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and before the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Let us kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all the holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending out your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life in the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and William our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Christ, who said the apostles, peace I leave to you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Of each other, the sign of
please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes with the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Kindly note that Holy Communion is for baptized and practicing Catholics.
Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O oh Lord, that glorying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with Him eternally in His heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Please be seated. Archbishop Gilbert Gacera, Chairman of FABC's Office of Laity and Family, will now address us. From 12 o'clock until this very moment, our young people in Asia join us in this virtual Asian youth gathering. And as a chairman of the Office on Laity and Family, with five sections, laity, family, women, basic ecclesial community, and the youth, I would like to thank you all virtually as you join us in this half a day celebration. The Asian Youth Gathering is a response to the request of Pope Francis that we have to prepare for the World Youth Day 2023. And I thank you all for the sharing, for the expressions of hope, for sharing with us difficulties after COVID-19. And I'm happy that after the three weeks of gathering of the bishops in Thailand, this is the first time that an office of FABC is responding to the challenge of the Pope. Thank you very much, my dear young people of Asia, especially those who work technically, who facilitated in our workshop, in our chat, and for 15 times, even last year, we really prepared for this big occasion. Thank you, my dear young people here in the Archdiocese of Singapore for hosting this celebration of the Eucharist, for joining us in leading our people to recognize Christ, the summit and center of Christian life, and I would like to thank Cardinal Bo, the President of the Federation of Asian Bishops Conferences, who in the earlier time during this afternoon gave us an inspirational talk. Very important that the Cardinal challenged us to respond to the call of the Holy Father in the Gospel of St. Luke. Mary arose and ran to hay for haste in view of the challenge of proclaiming the gospel. In a special way, I would like to thank you, Your Eminence, Cardinal Go, for accepting this uh, responsibility of officiating the Eucharist and for enlightening us to respond to the challenge of Christ the King with three important points for our young people in Asia. To surrender our lives to Jesus and only Jesus. And to express that joy that we have to radiate that joy when you smile, when you bring joy to people's heart. And lastly, Your Eminence, very important, to be messengers not as an application in our cell phone, messenger. But like Mary, we run in haste to proclaim the gospel as the messenger of God. Thank you, Your Eminence, for celebrating the, this Eucharist, for enlightening us in trying to put Jesus at the center as king of our young people. My dear young people of Singapore, my dear young people of Asia, Christus vivit has said, 
you are the now of God. And we respond to the challenge of His Eminence Cardinal Go, that you are the now of God. We have to surrender our lives to Jesus. We have to radiate that joy and be messengers of today. Not of tomorrow, but of today. Your Eminence, please accept this expression of gratitude for leading us into prayer to the Eucharist and um, from the Philippines and from all the bishops of Asia, please accept our humble gratitude. So I take this occasion to thank uh, His Grace Archbishop Gilbert for coming all the way from Philippines, bringing his team here. We are very happy to welcome you and we thank you for your support and most of all for leading uh, the FBC office that you will continue to help the laity, particularly family, young people to continue to grow, especially during these challenging times. And so thank you. Uh, Your Grace, Archbishop Gilbert, and also Father Jason for being here. And also thank you, Father Jude, uh, the rector of this uh, cathedral, and also the chaplain of uh, Office of Young People for um, getting his staff to organize all these, uh, these events. So thank you to one and all, and to each one of you for coming for this uh, celebration. Our hearts are with you. Uh, young people are very important to us. And whenever the bishop celebrates uh, Mass with you, I feel very young. Mm, otherwise, I think I'm getting too old already. So it's nice to be with young people because they make my heart new. And when I see your passion for the gospel, your joy, your, your excitement, your love, it really uh, inspires me in my own life as a bishop. So thank you so much for being my inspiration and I continue to pray for you and pray for me and pray for us all as we continue to uh, proclaim the gospel with great joy and with passion. Thank you to one and all. Thank you. So let us stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.
Please be seated.